Welcome to the Foundational Gifts Inspirational Podcast, hosted by author, speaker, and life strategist, Nicole Kurtzie. Nicole offers her spiritual gifts to encourage us all to live boldly and to fan the flame of God's gift in us. For the next 15 minutes, enjoy this infusion of spiritual strength and practical action. Well, hola, 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 and welcome back to the Foundational Gift Show here on the CWA Radio Network. I'm your host, Coach Nicole Kirksey. Follow me on Twitter at Coach Nicole and visit our Facebook page at Foundational Gifts. So, no matter how our lives are going, no matter how our marriage is going, our money, our ministry, no matter how our health is going, our friendships, our location, wherever we are, If we have kids, it doesn't matter if our kids are grown, if our kids are little, if they're teenagers like I have, we need prayer in our lives. If we are Christ followers and believers, we need prayer. We need to pray. We need people praying for us and we need to pray for others, but we need to pray. And there'll be a lot of times in our lives when we don't feel like praying. We don't want to pray and we don't feel like it. Um, Some of the times that I could think of is, you know, when things are going well for us, oftentimes we ne- we neglect prayer. We don't pray like we should. Um, we may give a passing thank you, Jesus, but we're so busy enjoying whatever it is that we don't pray. We don't petition God for other things because we're focused on what's going well. And it's great that things are going well for us. I know I love it when things go well for me, uh, but we can't neglect prayer. Uh, there are times, certainly, when things are going terribly. They're not going well at all, and we feel overwhelmed. We feel burdened, uh, very negative, you know, the weight of whatever is is going on, and we definitely don't feel like praying then sometimes. We feel like, you know, just being in what we're in or getting out of what we're in. You know, we don't really focus on that spiritual connection with God. You know, there are times I know... um, for myself when I feel like I'm too busy to pray or not I feel like I'm too busy to pray but you know I'll jump out of bed and get started on my day and before I know it half a day or a full day has gone by and I really haven't spent um, time in prayer as I had hoped Um, I didn't set my intention and follow through so a lot of times we quote unquote get too busy to pray now you and I know that we're never too busy to pray God is is always open right we can always turn to him whether our prayer is small or short or small or long But there are times we just neglect to pray because we're too consumed with the stuff that's going on with us at the time. Um, What are some other times when we don't feel like praying? When we're, when we've been praying for a long time for something, Uh, we've been petitioning, uh, mostly begging, I say, God to do something or move in an area or reveal something to us or we need something or whatever the case is, we've been at it for a while. And we don't feel like our prayers are working. We're not seeing any results. We're not seeing any movement. And we're just like, okay, we're just praying against the ceiling. I'm not going to pray about that. And I'm not going to pray at all. We all do it sometimes. It's not necessarily a conscious decision, but it happens. There are just times we don't feel like praying. Anytime we feel like our prayers are ineffective. You know, we don't feel like pursuing God. We don't feel like pressing in. We don't feel like praying. And so certainly when it's time for us to use our gifts and to, in ministry and service and, and fulfill the calling of God on our life, if we're not doing that in prayer, we're in big trouble. So prayer is a huge part of what we do here, what we talk about at, uh, on the Foundational Gifts Show. And certainly uh, I'm hoping to be an ever-increasing part of my own life. And this is, uh, I found an article in Relevant Magazine that can help us out. The name of the article is How to Pray When You Don't Feel Like It. And the article is written by psychotherapist and board-certified Christian counselor Jane Mazarin. Um, Jane writes for Relevant Magazine and is also a certified, she's also certified in natural health studies. Um, So many of you know that I have a health background, so I like that very much and I really appreciated the article. And as always, there is a link to the article uh, on the show description page. So what the article does is that it uses the prayers of David from the Bible, uh, the Psalms that David wrote, to offer us six methods, six methods for keeping vibrancy and authenticity in our prayer life. 
um, and really just keeping our prayer life alive, praying when we don't feel like it. So today we'll talk about three of the methods that the article mentions, and then next week we'll talk about three other me methods uh, in part two of our installment. So what are some of the features of David's prayers, and how can these prayers help us to pray when we don't feel like it? So let's take a look at them. The first thing that the, uh, the article says that we can do when we don't feel like praying is that we can offer heartfelt honesty, heartfelt honesty. Psalm 42 verses 9 through 11 uh, say, in part, I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning oppressed by my enemy? My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, where is your God? So when we don't feel like praying, we can offer heartfelt honesty to God. So heartfelt means we can come from our emotions. We can come deep from within. So here's David at a point, a uh, low point, um, running from being attacked. And he's asking God, have you forgotten me? I'm out here. I'm out here in this wilderness running all along, running all around. You know, I'm mourning. I'm oppressed. My bones are suffering. I'm out here. I'm down and out, God. Have you forgotten about me? So he's really down in the motions of it. He's asking God, where are you? He's being honest. This is how I feel. And, and, and doing that, if we consistently do that in prayer, we'll be less reluctant to approach God. If we know that we can be honest with God, if we know that we can keep it real with God, if you will, we have to believe that really God can handle all of what we feel in the moment. And the article says that David did not carefully choose or censor his words, right? And so I do this. When I, you know, was taught to pray, I was taught to be very careful with my words, use these words, pray these prayers. I came from a specific faith tradition, and that's what we did. We did repetition, um, and that's how I learned to pray. And so I value an articulate prayer, if you will, a particular words, um, prayers that are worthy of being heard by other human beings, prayers that don't fumble about. Um, there's this phrase that people use about, you know, so-and-so knows how to get a prayer through. You know, they use these, these phrases, these Christianese phrases, and they get in, you know, they use that. And, and there's nothing wrong with that if that's truly how you feel. But if we can really get down to the heartfelt center of what it is and use our own words to describe to God what is going on, if we can be real and authentic with him, and we know that that can happen every time we pursue God in prayer, we will be less reluctant um, to pray. We'll be less willing to hold back prayer and more excited uh, and more enthusiastic, even, even if our approach to prayer is, is not something positive, something's going on, you know. We might not be necessarily excited to pray about what we're praying about, right, if we're down and out, but we're excited to know that we can come to God because we can be honest with him. So if we keep this sort of sense that our words have to be correct, uh, we'll be distracted, but we really need to focus on this realness and say, God, you know, this is who I am and, and how I really feel. And if we can really cry out from our hearts, um, honestly, that's one way to inspire us to keep praying, particularly when things get tough. So the heartfelt part, emotion, and the honesty to just be truthful with God. So that's one way we can be inspired to pray we don't feel like it. Another way that the article offers is it says to affirm God's nature. Affirm God's nature. Psalm 145 verse 8 uh, is used elsewhere in the article, um, but I would offer it here as a reflection of God's character. It says, the Lord is compassionate and gracious. He is slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. He doesn't treat us as our sins deserve. For as far as the east is from the west, so far has God removed our sins from us. So that's God's nature. So all of the things that David put in the psalm, that he's compassionate, that God is gracious, that God is not mad at us. He's slow to anger. God is abounding in love. It's like, it's like over-the-top love. God is faithfulness. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't treat us like we deserve. We know what we've done and what we haven't done. And God doesn't treat us 
He doesn't like give us a side eye. He doesn't like shun us. He doesn't give us a cold shoulder. Uh, he doesn't give us what we deserve, which is worse than that. Um, and as far as the East is from the West, now you know that the East and West do meet. They're right next to each other, yet they are so far apart because there's no, you can't be those two things at the same time, East and West. So as far as they are from each other, no matter how close they are to each other, he's removed those sins from us. So even when our sins seem really close to us, as far as God's concerned, they're not, they're not touching us. They're not the same. They're not in the same place that we are. Just like the East is not in the same place as the West. That's really deep when you think about it. We can affirm God's nature. And when we start thinking about who God is, then we, again, will be less reluctant to pray. We have to ask ourselves, you know, do we really believe who God really is and what God can really do? We say we do. But if we did, we would be less reluctant to pray. And I say less reluctant, right? Because let's just be honest. We all get caught up in our flesh and in the moment and in our emotions. So there will always be times when we don't do our best or do what we know is best for us or what we ought or what we should or what we can or what's best and all that. Um, but we will be less bound in those directions if we would practice some of these things that the article is offering. So if we really do believe, you know, who God is and what he can really do, then we'll be less reluctant to pray. I mean, we have to ask ourselves, do we know God's true nature? Do we know that God wants us to succeed? Do we believe that God wants us to be fulfilled and to triumph over whatever's happening? You know, do we understand that God truly is all powerful? Do we understand that there's nothing we can ask of God that he's unable to do? We can't trip God up and surprise God and get God off his game. He is God. And so when we focus more on God's nature, when we focus more on the powerful and loving nature of God, rather than on whatever our problems are, or rather than focusing on our feelings and being all in our emotions, that's another way that would keep us inspired towards prayer and really to help us sustain a healthy prayer life, to focus on God's nature. So that's the second thing. A third thing that the article suggests that we do in order to inspire us to pray when we don't feel like it is to praise God. Psalm 57 says, I will praise you, O Lord, among the nations, for great is your love reaching to the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the skies. So you guys hear that song, right, um, that we sing in cre contemporary Christianity. Um... To praise God, to just give him the praise that is due. A quote from the article says, There is a reverence and awe that David had for his great God, and one he clearly yearned to express back towards God. A reverence and an awe that God has for God, and one that David really worked hard to use words and music to express to God. God, I want to praise you. I want to lift you up. I'm in awe of you and how great you are. And this really made my heart leap when I read this. You know, are we really awed by God and his greatness and his majesty? You know, do we understand that he deserves our praise, that God deserves our reverence? The reverence and the awe that the article mentions, God deserves that and our continuing gratitude simply for who he is. So never mind what our petitions to God are, right? Give me this, I need this, I want this, please help me here. Forget all that. But God, the God of the universe as he is, the God who is, is worthy of our praise. And when we see that, then we... And we can be in touch with that on any level. That should inspire us to move forward in prayer. And when we see that, we really shouldn't have any problem praying continuously or praying without ceasing, as, the, as First Thessalonians says. If we take this posture of praise, if we praise God for things great and small throughout our day, then we should have no problem praying um, even when we're not in the mood. Because we know that our own personal mood and whatever is going on for us at the time is no comparison at all for the, to the power and no comparison to the power and to the love of our great God. So praising God is another way um, to keep us inspired to pray. 
So consider these three approaches to continuing in prayer when you don't feel like it. I know that there's just so many times when I don't feel like praying. I don't feel like, you know, doing my devotion. I don't feel like journaling. I don't feel like, feel like, feel like. Um, And I know that I'm not alone in that. But consider these three approaches and try them out during the week. I mean, I would just, just, just think about it. Just if you're in a place and you know that prayer is far from you, and you want to pray, I know that for myself, there are times when I'm not praying and I want to and I I don't. I don't know what that's about other than just flesh and just be in some kind of way. But whatever you go through throughout the week, just consider that. Consider praising God even when you don't feel like it. Consider affirming God's nature, just saying out loud some powerful and very true thing about our amazing God. Consider um, sharing God your heart heartfelt in a heartfelt way in an honest way what's going on with you and see if that inspires you to pray at some point um, throughout the week and I would love um, to hear from you I'd love to so tweet me at coach Nicole and let me know how the um, press to pray if you will is going for you so that's our show for today so join us next week where we'll talk about three more features of the prayers of King David And how these can help us to continue to pray when we're not in the mood. So that's our show for today. Be sure to join us next week on Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern here on the CWA Radio Network. And until next time, hasta. You have been listening to Foundational Gifts where Nicole Kirksey shares ideas to help move you upward and forward into your next level. Be sure to join us in our online community at the Foundational Gifts page on Facebook to continue in this journey of bold living.